As the sun rises over the new Millennium Stadium in Cardiff, a few miles to the east, a much older building proudly stands in the same early morning sunlight. This film traces the history of this building and the people who have made this site their spiritual home for over 200 years. In order to help us understand the development of the chapel, we spoke to six people who have been involved with the church over many years. Iwin Cluellen, Muriel Field, Ray and Eileen Hamer, Edmund Husband, and John Rees. For the foundation of the Baptist Church in Lisvane, however, we must first look further back than living memory. In this, we are well served by the diligence of previous generations in keeping the church records. The Reverend David Edwards took oversight of the chapel in 1855 and three years later established a record book. In this, he not only recorded the arrival and departure of members over the years, but he also prefaced the book with a handwritten history of the chapel. This was almost certainly used as the main source for the history of the chapel, written by Titus Cluellen in 1882 to mark the centenary anniversary of the church. It was published the following year. All of these documents were of course in Welsh, as were the services. It was another 46 years before an abbreviated and updated English translation appeared. This was produced by Titus Cluellen's granddaughter, Olwyn Williams. These records all concur that Harry Rees founded the Baptist cause in 1782 when he moved into Tymar Farm on the northern slopes of Lisvane. A farm still stands on this site and it is clearly marked on the Rudry Road a little way beyond the chapel. For the first few years services were held regularly at the farm under the guidance of Harry Rees. As we shall hear later, Tymar retained its connection with the Baptist cause for many years to come. As the church prospered, the need for a permanent site became apparent, and in 1789 a piece of land with two cottages was bought from Wyndham Lewis for this purpose. The site was known as Therwyn Deg, meaning Fair Oak, and the nearby farm still retains this name. It is this site on which the current chapel stands. We asked Iwin why it was positioned so far away from the village. What, what? Why was it located in that particular place on Rudry? Well, because there was no village as such here then. No. And it was really built for the farming community because it right. was only farmers were here. That's right, yes. You see? And Time Hour was the nearest. And of course, the old chair was a big um, member. Titus was, well, he, I think he started it, didn't he? Yes, indeed. Or one of them, anyway. Yeah. Uh, and you, you mentioned Titus Rees Llewellyn. That's my husband's grandfather. Your husband's grandfather. Yes. yes. And, and he was in a farm that wasn't too far away. Time Hour. Time Hour, yes. And were, were you saying that before, actually, even before the chapel was built, some of the services were held in... In Time Hour. In Time Hour. Yes, isn't they that, were. Isn't that What's a privilege, isn't it? It is a privilege. And yeah. it's not down now, I think. It is. I it? think, I think so, yeah. yes. Yeah. Our records show that in 1792 the two cottages were converted into one chapel. Iwin has one of the few sketches of this building. Now, if, if I'm not mistaken, I think you've got a copy of the chapel as it, as it used to look like uh, many years ago. Pa yeah, well, perhaps I can go and get hold of it. No, you can't because it's, not, it's in the chapel, in the vestry. No, but you, you've got a oh, copy oh, hanging in your bedroom, yes, haven't you? Oh, yes, That's yeah. right, yeah. Yeah, oh, yes, you're so, going to So I'll just but go I'm, and get that, shall I? I'm sure Graham wants to get Here is uh, the photograph or yes, the, right. the drawing, a memory sketch of Baptist Chapel, Lisbane, 
1782, hanging in your bedroom. Yes. He didn't know why it's in my bedroom. This is um, Evelyn's grandfather. I see. Evelyn's mm. grandfather, that's right. I see. And, and when I think that's a lovely one. A lovely photograph. Oh, of course, that's lovely. That shows it in... Um, Today. Uh, 1988, that yes, one is. Yes, And, of course, it was different in those days. It didn't have the, the vestry on the side. No, no, you know. it didn't have the vestry. And, and, and did I did I hear that at one time it was two cottages or not? Was it built especially it in the chapel? It was built. No, no, it was built. They were two cottages. I see. And then they bought the cottages and made yes, it into yes, a chapel. Yes. yes. I see. Oh. And, uh, there is a history. I've, I've, I've lost more of it, my sister-in-law. Mm. It's a lovely little chapel, isn't it? It is. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's a marvelous place. The work continued to prosper. And in 1818, a purpose-built chapel was opened. The cost was over £276, and although we have no picture of this building, the dimensions are recorded as being 40 feet by 24 feet. Fourteen years later, in 1832, a daughter church was established named Capel Gwillem. This has since been converted into a house, but the road alongside retains a chapel name as a reminder of its history. In 1856, the Fair Oak Chapel was in a dangerous condition, and a third chapel was built on the same site. This is the chapel that remains in active use to this day. This chapel cost over £500 to build. The hauling was done free of charge by members and friends, and now we are in touch with living memory. Uh, we had an old chap that was lodging down by our cottage there that he remembers putting the big stone step as you go into the chapel, and he brought that from uh, down the moors. Did he? Yeah. Oh, how far away? Which moors were those? Down the moors, uh, the Cardiff moors. Did he? Yeah. Cardiff moors, East moors. Yeah. With a horse and cart. Did he? And oh, he remembers see. bringing that there. Well, well, well. But that was out of the blue. Yeah. Titus Llewellyn was 18 when the chapel was built. We asked Iwin to tell us a little bit more about him. Well, they were all farm workers. I mean, Erin's mm. father wasn't a farm worker yeah. because his father mm. was in time out before him. Titus Schwellen, the man with, with the white beard. I remember. In the photograph in the that's book. Right. Yeah, that's, yes, right, that's, yes, right. that's right, yes, that's right. I don't remember him, of course, mm. but he was a, a good Christian man mm. and worked very hard in the chapel. He did. And apparently he was about the only one who could write properly in, in, these, the, in this time. And anybody who had a letter to write or and didn't want to go to the solicitor, they would come to Elmer's grandfather. I see. M husband also knew of Titus, perhaps from a slightly different viewpoint. This is. <coughs> well, I don't remember much, but he, as what I heard about him, he was a bumptious old bloke. <coughs> I, my father would tell a story. <coughs> he was, I don't know if my father, I think he was then, a young councillor when Roth Park Lake was being built. I see. <coughs> and this your Titus of Wellen always had a lot to say. He was on the council and <coughs> they were asking all of the local people, local councillors or have you, to give gifts towards the uh, Roth Park. Park Lake. So this year old chap got that one somebody got up and suggested it would be a good idea if we give them a pagoda. See. And this year they went and got up and said, well, he agreed with it, but couldn't I give them two, then they could breathe from them. <laughs> well, well, and did they, did they actually uh, get two pagodas or not? <laughs> Titus lived well into the 20th century, dying in 1917 at the age of 80. His grave is still well preserved, close to the chapel to which he contributed so much. We are now into the 20th century and M has some early memories of chapel life. What I can remember, Sunday mornings, I don't think we went to chapel Sunday mornings, but there was only about ten people who would be going there Sunday mornings. Only ten. And yeah. <coughs> they were there were three brothers, Davies. Davies. Who walked one behind the other. 
I see. From uh, from Liz Vane. That's right. I see. <laughs> were, were, were they related to Morris Davy? Yes. Yes. That's right. I see. Were they his, his father? His. Oh no, it's his grandfather. Uh, his grandfather. Yes, his grandfather and two uncles, you know. I see. And they were loyal members. That's right, yeah. yes. Did they they had a big part to play in the service or who who actually took the service? Oh, well they had ministers there, you know. <coughs> the, f <coughs> the first minister I can remember, well I can only just remember, was a Mr James. He was a minister there in nineteen Eight or nine. Nin nineteen oh eight and nineteen oh nine. You you you've got the records. You've seen it. No no no. I think uh, Graham's uh, got the records and uh, he's been uh, looking <coughs> it up. But uh, well, it might be nineteen eight or so. Yeah. I tell you what I can remember. My mother saying she was embarrassed because the minister visited there when I was about two year old, and I dirtied my trousers when <laughs> I was there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Walking or riding for those from further afield continued to be the main means of getting to the chapel until well into the 20th century, as several of our friends recall. Farms. Yeah. And of course in the early days, I mean, it had finished by the time I started going, but I mean, my parents used to walk, you know, to chapel, and when they were standing on, they'd walk to Lanedon to a dance or a, a whist drive or things. So, yeah. You know, so it was different then than it is yeah. now, obviously. I, I find that absolutely fascinating, the fact that some people think, well, that's funny, there's a footpath that goes right past the chapel. But it isn't really going past the chapel, is it? It's, it's footpaths coming. It's leading. To that's right, and that's the way people used to, used to get there years ago. Yes, right? yeah. yes. I find that absolutely fascinating, because you know, it's, it's quite significant. There are, you know, there's oh, a yeah, for well, most churches and chapels, mm -hmm. uh, footpaths, you know, that, that's, that's where they're going, really, yeah. isn't it? Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the end of the journey. It's a shortcut. Yeah. To get there. Yes. That's right. And of course, before there were roads, before there were sort of vehicles, then that would be the only way of getting to yes. the place of worship. Yeah. I mean, it's very obvious from here because, uh, you know, the chapel is sort of, you know, sort of a mile across country and three miles around the road sort yeah. of thing. So if you had to walk, you wouldn't have much, you know, if you had any sense, you'd yeah. cause the crow flies. Right. Um, lots of people came with horses. I can remember coming on ponies, you can. and they had the rings outside to tie the ponies up. Is that right? <coughs> I think, well I can remember, you know the chapel wall back, Barry? Yes. Where there was a ring in there that uh, they could tether the horse to. Oh, well, well that, that's fascinating. Walking to chapel wasn't just for members. The minister also lived in the village, as the original manse was located on Keffen Mabley Road. This had been purchased in 1792 along with the chapel land. It was rebuilt in 1875 and the building survives to this day, although it no longer serves as the manse. Muriel remembers when it did. When I came, Howell Williams was still here. I see. Where was um, he living? In the manse, at the, the bottom of the hill. I see. In Rudry, in Kevin Abbey Road. So that, that goes right opposite the shops? Going straight down towards down Church Farm. Road, and it's before you get to Church Farm. Yes, yeah, I remember. I remember. Manse, I remember yes. us having the manse. Yes. We we used to go down on a Saturday night. I don't know when the night be going home. We used to go and see if they'd done their coupons. <laughs> <laughs> when you say their coupons, you don't mean uh, uh, coupons for food. Football. <laughs> football. <laughs> the football pools. Yeah, quite. One special feature of the chapel is its outdoor baptistry. Her husband explained how it used to be filled with water. The baptism, the water. Where did you get? The, where did they get the water from, Dad? For the baptism, oh, from the field at the spring across the road. It's fed now with the corporation water, is it? Yes. Mm -hmm. What? And you'd, you'd carry buckets across from oh, the, no, from the spring pipe coming underneath the under the road. I, can you still get water that way, Barry? There is a little stream. Seeping in. There is. Mm. So there's still some, some That's water, right. yes. Yeah. Well, used to be quite, I suppose they cleaned it out, they kept, you know, but it used to take about 24 hours to fill it up then. Oh, that's see. not bad going. No, no. Once, <coughs> I can remember my wife being baptised and I was a jibber because I said I'd been a Methodist. 
M's wife Nancy was baptized at the same time as Muriel. 47 I was baptized. Were you? 1947? Yeah. I see. I was going to be baptized in Tredegal, and Watty Watkins was our minister then. Watty Watkins? Watty Watkins. Yes. Grand old man, you know. And he was ashamed because I was going to Tredegal to be baptized. So I said, give it out the next week and see what happens. And there were six of us. So another five joined you? Yeah. For the baptism? Was Derry Griffiths, Tudor Williams, um, Nancy Husband, and myself, and uh, who were the other two? Right. There were six of us. All together, six. Yeah. I see. Yeah, baptised. Uh, Ray and Eileen also have vivid memories of baptisms at the chapel. When Eileen and I, plus others, were baptised in 71, it was the custom then that we wore special dresses, so we borrowed ours from Clannishan Baptist. Heavy white dresses weighted at the bottom mm. and a little cape around the top. <laughs> <laughs> and it's very different now yeah. to see them going in yes. their jeans or mm. their trousers, isn't it? Mm. And I think one of my loveliest memories was when Clive was baptised and he belonged to the Boys Brigade in Lubina because there wasn't one out here. And they all came up, all in their uniforms That's and right. all. And they were all stood along the wall, right the way around. Well, you're not supposed well. to stand, you know, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> the big drop, it was um, completely covered, wasn't it? But it, it, that was a lovely morning. Perhaps the most remarkable feature about this outdoor baptistry is that it is still in use today, one of only two in Wales. Yeah, Lord and friend. So, on your request, Sharon and I have the great joy in baptising you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We turn now to the bonds within the village community. These have been particularly strong, with the local shop, the Young Farmers Club, the memorial hall and the chapel all being closely linked. Tell us a bit more about your shop. It was located well, see, wasn't it? It's, it's by the mini market, wasn't it, originally? Well, it used to be in the old house, you see. So it was different then. And we had a barn at the side of the old house. That's the old house, you oh, see. I see. Jetting out on the left-hand side. Let me just see if I can see that then. And at the back of there used to be the barn. And so that was opposite and the... And big ground, you see, because we had a great big garden at the back of Placid Ellen. Did you? Well, there oh. were no houses there then. Well, no then. houses at all there? No, that used to be the playing field behind us. Oh, I see. To, they used to play cricket in there. So you were located right alongside uh, St Dennis Church? Opposite, yes. Opposite yeah. St Dennis Church. We're close to where the mini market is now and where I well, really live in. It's all, uh, it was, the house was in the middle of that lot there. It, it was. It never have been pulled down. It wasn't, No. no. No, I, I I've, think got, you, I've got good snaps of it. You have? Oh, yeah. perhaps we could see those later. Got some lovely snaps on Lovely. The old house. Okay. And then there was a barn at the side, and then the young farmers used to uh, have, wish, uh, have games. Uh, they used to have... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The Young Farmers Club? Or the football? Young Farmers used to do a lot in the, in the old barn. They then, did. And in the house, you see. see. Pop used to open when he got up and close when he... <laughs> who was Pop? <laughs> My father-in-law. He was, I see. Yeah. He was the one who originally started the shop, was he? Yeah. He, he started the shop when he had an, a heart attack in 1933. Well, that's when the shop started, 1933. And, and, and was it was it specially built, or was it part of no, the house? No, no, it was part of the house. What, what did you do to make it into a shop? Well, they just turned the front room, the right-hand side of the house, into a shop. They did? Because yeah, we had no stairs, you see. We had a ladder going up from the living room. I see. And then the three bedrooms were one after the other. On the first floor. You walked floor. from one into the other. I yeah. see. And, and what, what did you sell in the shop? What? <sighs> Everything they can think of. <laughs> Biscuits, medicines, all sorts, really. Newspapers? Whatever. whatever or they did newspapers from 33. From 1933, they yeah, did the newspapers. Yeah, they did the newspapers. I see. And, and did lots of children come into the shop? Yeah, we had kids that used to deliver them as well. 
Oh, a lot of children then. All the children came in the shop. They did. Yeah. It was almost like a meeting place. Well, it was a meeting place, really. Yeah. And they'd all sit in there yeah. talking then. What would they be talking about then, Leo? The village and what they're going to do and the young farmers and all that. So, so you were pretty well known as uh, Uncle O and Auntie Mew oh, in the village. Yeah, yes, but I mean that was Pop and Nanfield then. That was it before you. Yeah, yes. that was before we were married. Yeah. Yes. Was in there. We asked John if he could remember the old shop. Yes, well, of course, by today's standards, it was really nothing like a shop. I mean, it was really like you, I suppose, uh, hear about and read about in books. It was like a, a shop in the front room of the house mm. that uh, Mr. and Mrs. Field originally, and Owen and Muriel later on, sort of lived in the property and were mostly in the living room when you went into the shop and then they somebody emerged to serve you either with whatever you were getting then usually either a penny drink of pop or a packet of crisps mm. which i can still see up on the shelves in those big square tins I remember those, yeah. and uh, sweets of course straight out of the jar yeah. in little bags you know weighed up separately yeah. in little bags but it was an exciting place yeah. to go yeah When Pop died, uh, we, Owen's had, father. Yes, mm. we had to decide on something, and I was coming up, well it was a fortnight before he died, that's right, I was coming up from Pennyland, and uh, Bob Case had picked me up because he'd been down to do reeves. They had a great big nursery that used to be, where are uh, there, right through or right through to Rowan Way were all nursery. Were they? Yeah. So where lots of houses are now built was nurseries. Yes. Casey's nurseries. Casey's nurseries, they. I see. They're over a hundred years old, they were. Were they? And mm -hmm. uh, I got, uh, Bob stopped the van and he said, do you want a lift? And I said, yeah. He said, I got a plot of ground you can have. Oh. So that's, that's what he decided, that's uh, 600 pounds for a plot of ground. Was it? Well, well. And, and is that where the post office is now? Yeah. So that was your, you, they then built a... We bought that. Mm. Um, Dennis bought the piece next door and John bought the piece next door. Mm. They built a bungalow on each side. I see. Uh, and, you, and, you were and we built a bungalow. You did. And shop. We decided to build a bungalow and shop, you see. I see. And, and, and did you then have sort of sweets and newspapers and... Yeah, news? everything then. Everything? Yes. Yeah. Anything that was asked for, we used to try and get. <laughs> So people would place their order and then you'd have to go yeah. and find it for them, yes. Oh. Yeah. But, um, I mean, Owen and Muriel played a, a focal point being so near in the shop as well and Owen was also steward of the hall. Mm -hmm. So when we wanted to book the hall for mm -hmm. anniversary practices or Christmas play practices, so you know, mm -hmm. we were very fortunate. <laughs> we just had to ask Owen mm -hmm. and as... Um, Ray was reminding us that mm. if we ran out of anything, you just go to the shop and, mm. and it would be just given to you. So a plentiful so supply of people, of support, organisation yes. and uh, in goods yes. in all ways. And yes. Muriel and Owen, for many, many years, as Liz Vane grew, so they still kept abreast of knowing people mm. by name and all the children. Mm. You took a long time getting served in their mm. shop, mind, <laughs> because uh, yeah. they would always have pick the children mm. up, have plenty of time to talk mm. to them, take them behind the counter. And That's <laughs> right. Mm. It could well be that the fact that Liz Vane is known as still having a community spirit it goes back to those times when they laid down some some roots that people were, would know each other. I'm uh, sure. Yes. A like new network. Yes. 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 Mm. Yeah. Another asset to the community in Lisbane is the Memorial Hall. We asked Iowan about it. No, no, we worship still in the chapel and we worship in the village itself in the hall. Memorial Hall. Yeah. And you've had quite a lot to do with that as well, haven't you? Yes, yeah. I'm a founder member of that. Yeah. I opened it. Yes. I opened it. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Yeah. Well, 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 I remember that now, yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah, tell us the story about what happened about that then. Well, After you've gone to all the work of putting well, it we together, had, we had a meeting. You know, mm. I was the chairman at the time, chairman of the hall committee, and uh, I knew we would, the hall was ready. You know, waiting to be opened, of course. Well, I've been scratching my head at that. Who can we have? And I thought, well, we must have somebody with plenty of money. 
and somebody with um, who could, you know, boost the village up and boost the hall Status. up. Status. And, and I was thinking, oh, all these things. So at the, I was in the chair, as I said. So they said, well, the, the most important thing tonight is the opening of the horn. Oh, I said, yes, but that is very important. And I kept on saying about it, you know. So they said, well, there is no blessed or hard to um, Eric Richards. Eric Richards, yes. He said, there is only one to open the hall, he said. I said, how ridiculous, <laughs> only one to open the hall. Oh, I said, I, I don't see that, Eric. I said, lots of people have worked very hard for the hall. And we had worked hard, because, I mean, we, we had enough money to clean the hall before we put it open. So that was, you know, in itself, that was wonderful. Yeah. It's gone on for years and years, mm. of course. Anyway, so he said, well, there is only one, he said, Aaron. Mm. So he said, uh, order horses. Well, but when he said, I don't feel well, and I nearly had a fit. I said, you'll be lucky, too. I said, you want somebody very important with plenty of money, and I'm like, oh. Anyway, they didn't hear of it, so I had to open it as such as it was. And, and there's your name on the stone yes, there. Yes, well, that is lovely, isn't yes, it? Yes, it is. How long ago was that now? Uh, about 11 years, I think. Is it? 10, 11 years, 10 years. As recently as that, is it? I think so, oh yes. yes I see. But oh. of course, I mean, the, the collecting of the mm. money has been going on since well, many, many years ago. It's, it's we don't owe a penny on the whole, it's, all is cleared. It's really good to have uh, a centre of activity oh, right yes, in the village yes, itself. Yes, it's really important, yes, you know, we, we acknowledge that. Yes, yeah. We also asked John about the community activities. People that were involved in one thing were usually involved in everything. And, you know, they were, Irwin was sort of the president of the WI, the, the strong person in the chapel. The trauma society. Yes, and everything. Yes, and, yes, and yeah. a lot of people were the same. Mm -hmm. My main interest in those days, of course, was the young farmers who were uh, and in those days, it was a very successful club in this vein, and they, um, at that time, built that uh, the annex. annex onto the memorial hall, mm -hmm. sort of, which was quite an achievement at that time. Mm -hmm. I, I've noticed a little placard. They found I only noticed the day yesterday, actually, the commemorating the building of the annex over a, a long period. You know, yes. by the, the well, the boys sort of dug the footings by hand, and you know, we were sort of. You know, it, well, in those days it was quite an achievement. It must have been, yes, yeah. And the Young Farmers Organisation was, or still is, unfortunately, it's there's not a club in this vein now, but uh, it was a very, very good. Yeah. Mm. It, it, isn't it? Isn't it amazing that our one-way club now regularly meets every Sunday in the uh, annex in the Young Farmers Club the annex? Then? Yes. Yeah. The one-way club to which Neil referred is the renamed Sunday School. Auntie Mew was actively involved in this for half a century. Both of you were involved heavily with the Sunday School, weren't you? Oh, it wasn't. No. He wasn't. No. 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 That was your, 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 you were. Yeah, involved. Arthur Williams was Arthur Williams and Auntie Kitty. Mm. Uh, were with the, that was Mrs. Fields' sister mm. with the Sun. That's the only two that had the Sunday School. One of Muriel's many roles was to organise the annual Sunday school outing to Barry. Ray and Eileen reminisce. This was our annual outing in Bindles. In Bindles. We would line up by the shop mm. and the coaches would... There'd be a couple of two, so two, two three coaches. They wouldn't be, they would be called Shalabangs. Shalabangs, <laughs> exactly. Mm. And we would go down there and s spend uh, time at um, Corn Up in the swimming pool, mm. tea in Bindles, then over to Barry Island for the last hour to go on the fair. Mm -hmm. So the children could enjoy themselves there. Quite popular. We did that quite. That was a very popular. Yeah. Yes. That was an annual event. Yes. Mm. And uh, as soon as as soon as you'd had tea, you could then go across to the island where we used to love to spend some time on the fun fair. Yeah. But anybody seemed to be disappearing before tea was always in hot water. Uh, yes, yeah, so everybody used to look forward to that. But with, what, what time of year would that, uh, would that be? I suppose in the school holidays. Mm -hmm. uh, August time? Yes, August time. Yeah. So. yeah. Oh. It often rained, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so we weren't always lucky, perhaps we were being blessed at that time. <laughs> no, that's right. Yeah. I've got a vivid... Uh, I can recall David Wilde, who was living locally in those days and used to come to Sunday school, uh, wanting to be first to the fun fair, 
and first up the Helter Skelter, and, and first down the Helter Skelter. And it had been a nasty day that day, and he got, a, he got up to the top and he came whizzing round like you do. But unfortunately, where he landed, the water that the rain had collected all day on this sort of landing area, <laughs> and he was soaked from <laughs> top to bottom <laughs> on his first ride, which didn't go down very well. So he was, he was <laughs> wet all day. Yes. Bindles, is it? Bindles. Bindles, yes. Yeah, I'd mm -hmm. go and see them and book them in there for lunch mm -hmm. and tea. Mm -hmm. And into the pool, we used to book the whole pool, you know, swimming, swimming pool. pool. Yeah. So we could go to Bindles in the morning. Mm -hmm. If it, it, oh, he was lovely. If it was wet, he used to say, right, you can have him down on the dance floor, Mrs. Field, until lunchtime. Mm -hmm. And then we put the lunch, if it was pouring, raining. Mm -hmm. right. Very good to us mm -hmm. there. Otherwise, we'd be in Jackson's Bay. That's the little bay down next, below next by door. the uh, yeah. pool, by, by, by the, the big swimming pool. Yes. Book them into the swimming pool at two o'clock, mm. come out from there at five, mm. go over to Bindles for tea, mm. and we'd have tea there. Mm. Then they all had to be put their stuff all tidy and go into the, the coach, put the stuff all in the coach, and go down then to the showground. Mm. And they had, used to have Barry an hour, hour in Barry Island. So they really enjoyed that day, yeah. Yeah. very full day. Yeah. So mm -hmm. they were warned not to spend too much in the ice cream parlour <laughs> in Bindles. <laughs> <laughs> so they got out to the pool, <laughs> to the showground. Mm. We now return to the chapel building. Since the third chapel was built in 1856, it has remained largely unchanged. There have been one or two improvements, however. Yes, well, of course, in those days, the toilet was much further down the graveyard. Mm. You almost want a, a route map to find it. <laughs> but mine, when you did find it, it was a lovely place to be because there was a double-seater in there. <laughs> so you could take some company to the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case see, you got lonely in there. See, you're on ground. So that was in the middle of there, or the far end of the graveyard? Then, yes, the building is still there, but it's sort of fallen into disrepair. Oh, perhaps we can get because we had the toilet down the churchyard. What was it? Two-seater. Two-seater. <laughs> Why was it two-seater then, Mew? Well, you had two holes there. <laughs> <laughs> two buckets underneath. I see. <laughs> so this is it. Ashes from the coke then used to go into the, into the bottom of the washroom and you stood your bucket in the ashes, you see. I see. <laughs> so Didn't matter if it was splashed over there. <laughs> We asked M what improvements he could remember. They came down with all the oil lamps there. So, so they used to use oil lamps? Yeah. How many oil lamps would be in the chapel? One big one. In the middle? Two, three, about seven, I would About think. seven oil lamps. It must have been quite difficult getting the oil into them, getting the paraffin into them. I suppose. I don't know whether all Mrs. Richards did it or not. Or it was part of her duties. I expect. I see. <coughs> So, so eventually they decided to, to have electricity. That's right. Mm. Two of the oil lamps can still be seen on the wall behind the pulpit. Here we also find evidence of the Welsh speaking roots of the chapel. The imposing church bible located on the pulpit lectern is in Welsh. It is still used by the small but enthusiastic group of Welsh speaking Christians who meet at the chapel once a month. Iwan recalled the origins of this group. What do you remember about uh, the services uh, in the early days when you first came? I mean, how long? Let, let's go back to when you first came to uh, 19, to live in Lisbon. 1940. 1940. W was that the time when you were married? Is Actually, it? I was married in 1940. Mm. We in the morning on Welsh on a, a Sunday morning was a Welsh service, all Welsh, mm. and uh, hymns and the reading and the prayers, the sermon. It was. Anyway, uh, I think only about six of us understood it, really, but still, there we are. A lot of them understood Welsh, but they couldn't speak Welsh, of course. Well, anyway, uh, that passed by, and we had one service a month then, and uh, well, that went on for a little bit longer then. About how long ago now are we talking oh, about? Oh, I'm going back 19, 1940, and uh, we stopped at the Welsh almost straight away. Yeah. Jack, you were on... Do you remember Jack Thomas at Dufferin? No, I don't. I'm sorry. Don't you really? <laughs> I'm sorry. I think he was been here so long. He was one, he was a senior deacon. I see. And he was related to Evelyn. 
and, and he would well, well, he was very broken well speaking. He could understand perfectly. Yeah. And he used to enjoy a bit of Welsh, of course. Mm. So we used to have, sometimes have a Welsh service in the afternoon, but now we do once a month, of course. That's yeah, right, yes, yeah. And, and, you, and you've, you have attended those oh, monthly yes. Welsh services. I started those. <laughs> yes. In this short film, we have touched on brief moments in the history of the chapel, the village community, and a few of the people who have served them both. The real story, however, is that of lives touched and changed forever by living faith in Jesus Christ. The greatest testimony to the many who have served in the chapel is that as we enter the third millennium, the Baptist Church in Lisvane is far more than the bricks and mortar of a historical monument. Rather, it is a vibrant Christian community sharing a living faith that has remained unchanged for not just 200, but 2,000 years.